This great organ is being built by two internationally acclaimed firms in a joint venture which promises uh, great things, I'm very, very sure, because they have worked together before. We're not being a guinea pig here at Fountain Street. We're not into any of that sort of thing. Uh, we're not going to have them testing out things on us that are a surprise and are going to shock people. It's time-honored tradition of traditional organ building married with 21st century organ building. So it really is the very, very best of both worlds. Austin was chosen because they're one of uh, the largest and most reputable organ firms uh, in North America. They've been building pipe organs since the turn of the century. I can't, I don't know exactly the dates, I'm afraid. Um, the Allen Organ Company have been at the forefront of building digital organs uh, and electronic organs since 1939. This is going to be the instrument they'll be talking about for years, 141 rank Austin organ. That's a big deal in the organ community worldwide, not just in the Midwest or in the United States. That an organ like that deserves a space adequate to it. And there are very few spaces as adequate as our church for a great organ. Look at the dimension of it. You, know, you can fill the place with that sound and it's huge and you, 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 you feel as big as the place <laughs> the organ goes. Uh, that an organ like that should have a proper setting and our church is a proper setting. And it's a good thing uh, we're building, rebuilding the organ now because when they went in there to take the organ out, they say because of all the rain damage to the walls, it was about to fall in on itself. And it would have done so in another year or two. Then somebody said, well, we should have let that happen. Then the insurance would pay for a new organ. But uh, I'm glad it didn't happen that way because we can use all of the old pipe. I had great and famous organists come there to do organ recitals too, and one of them was Virgil Fox. Carl O'Curley was studying with him at the time. So whenever Virgil would go to what he considered to be an important organ, he would take Carlo along with him. So he brought Carlo to, to uh, Grand Rapids. Wouldn't let Carlo touch the organ until after the concert was over. So then uh, Monday morning, it was a Sunday night uh, concert, Monday morning, Virgil Fox left, and Carlo asked to stay over because he wanted to play this organ. Well, he did stay over. He sat down at the console and started playing, and five minutes after that, I turned on the tape machine, and he played for two hours from memory. He was only 17 years old at the time. I was blown away. In Austin's long and venerable history, which spans from the end of the 19th century, um, I am told that there is only one organ slightly larger than the one that you will have here at Fountain Street Church as far as number of pipes go. So this is virtually their magnum opus that is coming here. They will spend approximately six months erecting and intonating, voicing each of the, I believe it's seven to seven and a half, eight thousand pipes. I'm not, I don't have the figures in front of me, I apologize. Um, each of these 174 ranks will be voiced note per note so that the instrument, when it's completed in January of 2003, it will fit this building like a seamless glove. Nothing will be too sharp, nothing will be too loud, nothing will be too soft. Everything will blend together seamlessly because they voice on site. Many companies pre-voice virtually all their pipe work, but Austin prides themselves on doing it in the building where it's going. Why voice it in Hartford in their voicing shop, which is a room 15 feet square, when it's coming into a giant auditorium seating 1,600 plus. And what makes it special, I think, is because players have been involved with the design of it. The company has been told exactly what to do by professional organ builders and professional organists. I'm not the only one, but I've certainly had things to say about it. And um, I, that in itself simply means it's a reflection of all of my 35 years of experience playing the organs around the world and I've played, I've been fortunate and blessed to be able to go out and play some of the finest instruments ever built in history. And 
using all that knowledge with John's enormous knowledge and, and Bev Howerton uh, and his history of the church and his knowledge of the organ and its repertoire, um, it, it's, uh, it's going to be not only a very, very fine service playing organ, the finest you can imagine, but it's going to be the most stunning concert organ you can imagine. When they planned that building, put a huge organ chamber at the back of the church. All that, all that, behind that arch up there, there's a, there's a 42 foot high uh, organ chamber and it's as wide as the choir loft and as deep. It's meant to hold organ pipes. And uh, so they wanted to have an important organ in there. All, all, most big churches have big organs in them. I went to Fountain Street Church about two years ago when I saw the organ in the condition it then was. And it was not, I have to say, in very good condition. We had 87 ranks in the old organ, and there'll be 140 ranks in the new organ, almost double the number of pipes in there. And there'll also be 35 ranks of electronics added to it. The final result of a marriage of this nature has proved to be, over many installations that we have to date, has proved to be an ideal marriage. That is, the sounds that you have from the pipe organ and also the sounds that you have from the digital organ are such that they are not discerned as being one or the other, but yet go together to form one large, beautiful ensemble that is very convincing, both in the digital side as well as it's naturally convincing because there are real pipes involved as well. S some effects which, to produce with pipes, would have been extremely expensive and would have taken up an immense amount of room are being provided by these digital means. One of the faults of that building is that it soaks up bass frequencies because of the, the way the paneling is downstairs. It, it vibrates. If it had a solid backing and, and it wouldn't vibrate, then the bass reflections would come out. But as it is, it absorbs the bass reflections, so it needs more bass and electronically we can put it in. Fountain Street had 232, two, thir that, that means the lowest, lowest C goes straight up for 32 feet. And we had two of those in the old organ and, and uh, they will be put back in. Uh, but now with the electronics, we can have five 32s, which gives the really bass rumble. The uh, pipe organ has always been on the cutting edge of technology and it is to the benefit of people who want to preserve pipe organs to take advantage of as much of the technology as they can. The installation at the Fountain Street Church is a large one. Uh, especially large on this project is the console itself, which has many, many controls. This will be a very complex console that will integrate many, many different functions, stops, and sounds. Uh, when it is complete, the organ world will recognize it as a significant installation.